a series this month uh, that we're calling Pray Like This. So we're doing a series on prayer. The title is Pray Like This. This morning, I want to talk about praying with kingdom authority. Praying with kingdom authority. Look with me in the book of John, the 16th chapter, beginning in the 16th verse. Now, let me, before we start reading, I just want to say this to you that um, John 14, 15, and 16, the chapters John 14, 15, and 16, most theologians believe that this was the conversation, uh, this was an account of the conversation at the Last Supper. So when Jesus was sitting there having the Last Supper with his disciples, and remember Leonardo da Vinci was in the corner painting. This is the conversation that happened, or this is part of the conversation that happened during the Last Supper. And so let's begin reading John 16, beginning in verse 16. This is Jesus speaking. He says, in a little while, you won't see me anymore, but a little while after that, you will see me again. Some of the disciples asked each other, what does he mean when he says, in a little while, you won't see me, but then you will see me. And I'm going to the Father. He has said that earlier in the chapter that I'm going to the Father. Verse 18. And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Verse 19. Jesus realized that they wanted to ask him about it. So he said, are you asking yourselves what I mean? I said in a little while you won't see me. But a little while after that you will see me again. Y'all keeping up with this? (laughs) Verse 20. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice and no one will rob you of that joy. Now, Jesus is prophesying in this moment. He is giving them a clue of what was to come. So let me ask you, what is he prophesying about here? His death, burial, and resurrection. So he's saying there's going to be a time coming where you're going to weep. You're going to mourn, but hang in there because joy's coming. So he's, he's giving this prophecy. And actually what he's doing is, if we, as we continue to read, I'll show you this. But what he's doing is he's saying there's, a, there's going to be a line drawn in history. This event's going to draw, draw a line in history. And something is going to change. A lot of things are going to change. But specifically, he's going to say, he said, there's one thing that's going to change that I want to talk to you about. But so after that event, all things are going to change. So let's look at what that change is. Verse 23, at that time. So at that time, when you're rejoicing, after I've resurrected from the dead, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the father directly And he will grant your request because you use my name. Verse 24, you haven't done this before. Why haven't they done this before? Because they hadn't needed to. Because Jesus was with them in the flesh. So they were asking Jesus Jesus for things. But he said, there's a time coming where you're not going to ask me. You're going to ask the Father directly, but you're going to ask it in my name. And listen to the last part of this verse. So ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. Today I want to talk to you about praying with kingdom authority. Can we just pray right now? Lord, we love you so much and we love your word. We honor your word. We give attention to it. Your word, according to Hebrews, is living and active. So I declare that it has the right to be living and active in me today. My mind needs to be renewed and your word is what renews my mind. So I give you permission to renew my mind this morning with your word. Have free reign in me. Let your word bring life and change. And it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, I have a question for you. How many of you end your prayer with the phrase, in Jesus' name I pray? Okay, so a lot of us do that. 
Now, don't raise your hand because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But how many of you know why you do that? I see some of the smart ones are like, I know why. <laughs> but I see some of you, he didn't raise your hand because you didn't want to bear. Most of us, we, how many of you know we do things in our life where we don't know why we do them? And that could be one of those things that we just, we do it this way because grandma did it this way. But there is a very specific reason that we pray in Jesus's name. And so Jesus's prophecy was after my death, burial and resurrection, what'll change is you can go directly to the father if you go in my name. Church, listen to me. We have access to the God of the universe by the name of Jesus. Through the name of Jesus, I can pray. My prayer goes up to heaven and my heavenly father hears me because I pray in the name of Jesus. So if we're going to walk in kingdom a kingdom authority in our prayer, we need to understand the reason and the power for praying in the name of Jesus. So there is, there is a reason why we pray in Jesus' name. The first reason I want to show you is found in a, uh, in, in a scripture I want to point out. And I want you to read it because it, I'm very interested. If you know anything about victory, you know that we are very interested in making disciples. And so if you're going to be a disciple, you've got to have your theology right. You really need to spend some time understanding why you believe what you believe. You need to do some homework so that you will know why you believe what you believe. And let me just say this. You know, in in the last couple of decades, we've seen the non-denominational churches kind of explode. We've seen a lot of non-denominational churches. We've seen a lot of denominational churches drop the label of their denomination so that now everybody's non-denominational. So now non-denomination is a denomination. (laughs) Right? But once we lost the tags, people move from church to church pretty frequently and and easily. and And that's a good thing. But what I found is, you know, I have some people who, 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 you know, when I talk to them after service and I meet guests, um, are people who have come for a little while and they explain why they keep coming back here. You know, they say things like, well, man, we love the music and that's great. And you know, we, we like the casual atmosphere and that's great. I mean, we try hard to make this a place where you would enjoy it. And, and maybe you come just because our donuts are better than the church down the road. And that's fine. But at some point, your being here is not about the music. It's not about, it's about whether truth is being preached here. And you should not be in a church. You have to pay attention to the doctrine of the church you're attending. You can't show up just because you like it. It's cool. We got the right lights. And how about those singers we got on stage? Jeez, man. That was, this morning was like, wow. But that's not the reason to join a church. We got to get our doctrine right. And so I don't know why I went off on that, but there it was. So when I'm saying this stuff to you, please understand, I need you to actively engage, insert this into your spiritual life and get your theology right. And if what I say does not line up with the word of God, leave immediately, leave immediately, right? So we're looking in the word and here's why we can pray in the name of Jesus. Look with me at this verse and we're going to look as students at this verse. It's first Timothy two chapter uh, verse five. It says this for there is one God. How many gods are there? And there is one mediator. How many mediators are there? So there's one God, one mediator between God and man. And who is that? Who is that? It's Jesus. So the Bible tells us that there is one God and there is only one mediator between God and man. And I don't mean to offend you, but that man is Jesus. Jesus is the only way to the Father. 
He is the one, he is currently sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. So if we pray, listen how I'm saying this now, because I'm trying to not offend you if you're from another doctrine. And again, we, I love all our brothers and sisters. I'm not saying victory owns it all and we know it all. I'm not saying that. But when we find truth, we need to stay close to truth. If you were raised in a denomination that has you pray through anyone but Jesus, it's not scriptural. And again, I'm glad you like it here, but, but these are the things that have to define us. That's right. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. Yeah. So the reason we pray in the name of Jesus is because Jesus is the mediator. The medi a mediator means someone who stands in between two to bring peace and reconciliation. In other words, Jesus is standing between the holy God of the universe and me. And thank God he's there. Because the holy God of the universe would evaporize Jody without the mediator of Jesus. Without the blood of Jesus covering Jody. So when God the Father looks at Jody, he looks through Jesus. And because I am hidden in Christ, my identity is, is, is attached to Christ. And so I'm not coming to the Father as Jody. I'm coming through my big brother Jesus, the firstborn of many brethren. And here's what you need to know about the firstborn. Remember in Jewish in the Jewish family structure, the oldest son was the one who was eligible for the inheritance. Come on. Yeah. The older son was eligible for the inheritance. I am not the older son, I'm the younger son. That's right. Jesus is my big brother. And he is the one that is eligible for the blessing. So I pray in my big brother's name. Remember the story of Jacob and Esau? Esau was the one who had, the, who had access to the inheritance. But Jacob sneaked in and begins to request of his father. And the father says, that's, that's the voice of Jacob. And Jacob does not have access to, to my blessings, to my favor. Jacob doesn't have access to that. That's for the older son Esau. So he said, the voice belongs to Jacob. And so what did he do though? He reached over and felt the hand of Jacob. The hand of Jacob was covered in the feel and the sense of Esau. So here it is. The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hand is the hand of Esau. So I'll give the blessing because of the hand. Now contrast it with this. Where did I say that Jesus is at this moment? He's sitting at the right hand of his father. So Jody goes to prayer. Oh, father. And I begin to make requests of my father. And he says, I like Jody. Jody's a good old boy. But Jody ain't my son. You're my oldest son, Jesus. So he said, the voice is wrong. So what does he do? He reaches over to his right side and touches the hand and feels the nail scarred hands of his son. And he says, now Jody has access to my blessing because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. So I want to encourage you this morning to never finish a prayer saying in Jesus name, I pray without understanding what you're praying, what you're doing. If we're going to pray with kingdom authority, we need to understand this. First, I mean, John 14, 13, look at this, this next verse. Listen to what Jesus promised. Listen to the kingdom authority, the power we have access to when we pray in the name of Jesus. John 14, verse 13 and 14 says, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Listen, please read this like you've read it. This is the first time you're reading it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Listen to me, church. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's the kingdom authority you and I have in using the name of Jesus as we pray. Amen. But if we don't understand this or if we walk in, in ignorance for this, we will miss the blessing of our Father. So 
There's only one way to get to God, and that's through the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. And when we pray in the name of Jesus, we have kingdom authority available to us. Unlimited potential. And the reason I'm saying that is because there are those of you in here today who you need something to change in your life. You need something to change in your life. But as you've been praying, you're praying in a spirit of, you know, I got to crawl into God, my father. And I, I have to beg God, my father, for something. That is not God's plan. We come in the name of Jesus. And we have access to our father through the name. So we can come, the Bible says, boldly into the presence of our Father. But we got to get this straight. So we can pray for anything in his name and we'll have it. And some of you are just making the wish list right now. (laughs) That Lamborghini, I knew. (laughs) Haven't we seen that though? And we've seen people do that. And so we've said, because people have taken it to excess, we've said, well, that's got to be wrong. Listen, it's not wrong. The Bible says that we can ask in his name and he'll give it to us. But I want to tell you, there's one caveat. There's one caveat. We have the ability to speak in the name of Jesus, but we have to be authorized to do so. There's a difference between being authorized to use someone's name and being a forgerer. And so I just want to talk to you about this this morning. Last year, I had one of the greatest experiences of my life. Uh, Those of you who know me know that I, I, I love to deer hunt. And so last year, I got invited to go on a West Texas deer hunt. Can all the deer hunters in the place say amen? West Texas deer hunting. I mean, this place was nice. The reason I got to go on this hunt was because I was invited. In my own name, I had no access to this place in my own name. But because I was with somebody in whose name there was authorization, I had access to this place. We drove right up and drove down the main driveway of this big hunting ranch. We drove right through the main gate. And the reason I'm saying that is because in this room, there's some outlaws. And you know that when you're outlaw and you don't drive down the main driveway and go through the main gate, you come in the back way. But because I was with somebody who had the authority to be on this place and to enjoy the full benefits of this place, we went right down the main driveway. We went right into the campground and walked right out of the truck. I'm not having to hide behind anything. I could shake hands and introduce and use my real name to all the other hunters in camp. When the barbecue pit got lit up at night, I could be right there partaken in West Texas barbecue because of the whose name I was there with, the authorized use of that name. The next morning, before daylight, wake up, jump on a side-by-side, turn the headlights on. You don't have to sneak through the dark. You can use the headlights. <laughs> Drive right to a blind, climb up in a blind, and have full access. Are you tracking with what I'm saying? Because I had the authority to be there, And I was using the authority of that man's name. Now, conversely, I want to tell you another story. This story happened about 25 years ago. I was working with a fella who invited me to go hunting. And if I said that man's name, half this room would know who it was. So I'm not going to say his name. Don't come ask me. I got invited on this hunting trip. And so we show up, and it was here local. We show up at this old boy's house, you know, before daylight. And there were several of us. I think there was like five or six of us there. He was taking us hunting. And as far as I knew, he had full authority to be where we were going. So off we go in the dark. Never seen the place I was going. Never seen it in daylight. He brought me in, stopped by and said, hey, you're to sit right here. You just stay right here. This is going to be your area to hunt. I said, fine, it's still dark. Off they go into the dark. I have no idea where they went. 
I am enjoying a morning of hunting on land that I was authorized to be on. And I had a couple of visitors and those visitors were night white tailed deer and they were not happy to see me. His name was landowner and his buddy and they were both armed and they began to explain to me that I did not have authority to be on the property that I was on. And so being that I'm not an outlaw, I said, listen, I'm out of here. I, you know, I didn't know. I'll leave. No big deal. Are y'all into this story? I'm leaving, right? And so they walked off and, you know, they were firm, but semi-friendly. And they walk off. Well, then I start thinking, well, if I just leave, my buddies don't know that I left. This was before the days of cell phones. They don't know that I left. And so they may be wandering all these woods looking for Jody. So I need to go find my buddies and tell them that I'm leaving. So after I packed up all my stuff, the landowner and them left, I went on the search for my buddies. Well, I didn't find my buddies. I found the landowner again. This time he was a little sterner. His mood had changed some. And being the... uh, the upstanding guy that I am, I ratted them all out. Because <laughs> he was not happy with me. And I said, listen, here's why I'm here. Who's who, here's who brought me here. Here's, here's whose name I am hunting under. The problem was that name didn't have authority to be on that property. In Texas, I had the right name. I was under the right authority. I was an authorized use of that name. You see what I'm talking about here, church? So when we pray in the name of Jesus, we have to have authorization to use that name. I want to give you three quick points on how we become authorized to use the name of Jesus in our prayer. First of all, you have to have a relationship with the one who's a, who has the authority to be there. You have to have, you can't use the name of Jesus if you don't know Jesus. Jesus himself said in Matthew 7, 23, he said, listen, in the last days, there are going to be people who come to me and said, Jesus, you know, we cast out devils in your name. We did miracles in your name. You know, aren't you impressed with us, Jesus? And here's what he's going to say to them. He's going to say, I never knew you depart from me. So some of us are using the name of Jesus and we don't know Jesus and he doesn't know us. So if you want to walk in, in, in the authority and, king, and pray with kingdom authority using the name of Jesus, first of all, you have to know Jesus. Amen. You have to be born again, church. Amen. You can't just be a good guy. Right. You can't just be a member of a church. Right. You got to know Jesus. The second thing that authorizes us to pray with kingdom authority using the name of Jesus is submission to the one whose name you're using. Luke 6, 46 says, and why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things which I say? So are you praying in the name of Jesus and you are not in submission to Jesus? We don't, we don't understand his Lord. We appreciate him saving us, but that whole Lord thing is a bridge too far. Say, oh me, or amen, or something. So the question is, if you really want to walk in, if you want to pray with kingdom authority using the name of Jesus, the question is, are you submitted to Christ? The third thing, third way that we can be authorized, become authorized to use the name of Jesus is to operate according to the regulations of the place. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The idea was, God, I don't want to sin against you. I want to walk in cooperation with you and your will. So what have I done? I've hidden your word in my heart so that I'll know how to act. I know what the rules are. You know, it was interesting, that trip I was telling you about when I was hunting in Texas, As I was in the truck with my buddy and we're driving around the place, 
I'm talking to the one who has authority to be there and whose authority I'm under allowing me access to this thing. You know what I was able to do? I was able to say, hey, what are the rules here? This guy knew the owner and I didn't know the owner. Talking to my buddy, I began to know the will of the owner of the place because of my mediator. We need to get in the word, Jesus, the word made flesh, get in the word and we begin to know the heart of my father. We get to know the will of the one who owns all this. So we continue to drive around and, and I continue to ask about the regulations and the rules of this place. And, and, and I get a complete education to function in ease at this hunting lease because I understand how it operates. I understand who's in charge. I'm submissive to the one who's in charge. I have a relationship with the one whose name I'm using. And those three things give me the authority to take full advantage of this hunting spot. My question is, do you know the one whose name you're using? Do you truly know him? Are you submitted to him? Are you walking in submission? And thirdly, are you aligning yourself with his will, his regulations? Are you walking according to the rules of the house? And if we're doing those three things, we can use the name of Jesus and catch another gear in our prayer life. And we can begin to pray with faith and trust and hope and anticipation, knowing that through the name of my, my big brother, Jesus, through the name of my savior, I can finally have that breakthrough I've been praying for. I don't have to beg for it. I don't have to plead for it. I don't have to pour mouth. I can go boldly into the presence of my father and ask with authority using the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, give the Lord a hand.